Hi there, this is Anna Aspinas from Anna Aspinas Designs. I'm back with a brand new video after a brief hiatus. I had a few computer issues, but now those seem to be squared away. And so I am back to sharing some digital artistry using products by Anna Aspinas Designs. You can see on my screen I have the artsy layered template number 270 from the latest release, Lateritius, which means brick red. And I was inspired to create this collection following a brief few days in the southwestern state of Arizona. The complete collection along with the coordinating artsy transfers are now available in the Anna Aspinus design store at Oscraps and I'll provide links to those below this video. The purpose of this session is really to just update you on the format of the artsy template and of course show you an interesting way on how to use them. So let's take a look at the new artsy template. If you've been with me for a while, you will be used to the various artsy layers delivered in PSD format which show up in the layers panel whether you are working in Adobe Photoshop or Photoshop Elements. Previously, these have all been a shade of gray and are designed to be used with the clipping mask function in Adobe Photoshop or Elements. You also have the option of recoloring any of the layers. However, as my creative process evolves, I'm also then changing up the way I deliver products to you. And I think that including more transfers within these templates really gives you the opportunity to produce artistry that's so much faster. And really that is my goal, is to help you create the art and to do it quickly and easily as possible while still being able to inject your own creative spark into the whole process. So in this artsy template, you can see we have a variety of different layers. We've got the gray layers that you might be used to as well as some of the paint layers. There are then these transfer layers, which really just add interest to your page and will save you time as you start working with the template. So essentially I have added those transfers in for you so that you don't have to make that decision. So really all you need to do is recolor the gray layers or perhaps clip papers to those gray layers and then add your own photos. So Beverly, who is one of the creative team members at Anna Aspinus Designs, created this really fun layout. And I thought it was really interesting that she took a transfer from the art play palette to create a blended photo. So I'm just going to run through some of the layers and show you how she built this page. So on top of the background layer, she replaced the gray layer with an artsy paper from art play palette Lateritius and then of course she moved on to recoloring or in this case it looks like she kept the gray stain as is perhaps moved it up slightly and then we have a small stain behind the frame here which she also kept as gray and then the transfers which happen to be hidden behind the photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the photo just so you can see what the underlying area looks like and then we've got, again, various transfers here that build up the scenery behind the framed photos. We have a stain mark. In her original layout, she actually turned that layer off. So this is the great thing about these layered templates is you have the flexibility to be able to turn those layers off. You could also choose perhaps to change the opacity of those layers as preferred giving you a lot of control over the creative outcome. And she's left these stains as black. Uh, there's some splatters down in the corner here. So some of these uh, layers are just left as is. You don't feel that you have to recolor a black or white layer just because you have the ability to do so. I always go back to this idea of just because you can doesn't mean to say you should. The whole point of my artistry ethos is that it should be quick and easy for you. I do the hard work so that you can simply enjoy the process. 
So I'm just going through, just turning these layers on and off so you can see. I had this texture layer in here which she chose to turn off so you can see she wanted a much more subtle appearance to her artistry. I like a little bit more punch, but again, that comes down to personal preference. And then we've got this great art stroke in the back here, which connects the photos to the left edge of the page. And then she simply added in her photo and she did this in a really neat way. So she took a transfer from the Art Play palette Lateritius, just placed it over the top of the other layers in the template, and then she added a photo by clipping that photo to the transfer. So you'd layer the photo over the top of the transfer and go to Layer, Create Clipping Mask. So here's the original image. I actually added this mask with a gradient tool on top of there, if you go to layer, create clipping mask, you can see that there's a fine line across the top here. So I just added a mask, selected the gradient tool, and then just pulled that in a little bit just to remove that line across the top. And I did the same thing with that underlying transfer. So immediately you're able to blend that photo quite effortlessly into your background. And then from here, she just added photos to her frames. She has a couple of really neat techniques happening here. So she has this flower image and she applied a hue and saturation adjustment to that. So if I go ahead and turn that off, you can see the difference in the color. She was able to add some yellow hues to it. And she did the same thing with the landscape photo at the top here. You can see that by adding this hue and saturation adjustment layer, she was able to add some turquoise into the sky of her photo, bringing in the blue that is prevalent in the background of her page. So moving on to our fourth frame, which is in the background here, she simply clipped a photo to that layer and really just by adding a photo with a darker color to add greater value, it draws the eye in and frames this black and white image, which is in frame number three. And I thought it was interesting that she added in the black and white. It's one of my favorite techniques is to mix color and black and white images. I think that the black and white can really serve to tone down an area. She actually left the color image in there. So if we turn that black and white image off, you can see how the green doesn't really fit within the page. You also have this bright area of orange. And so by removing the color of that photo, it shifts the focus back onto the pink and allows the pink to bounce off the orange and red tones that are by the black and white photo. So again, less is more here. And then she introduced her title which is down at the bottom. And I thought it was quite interesting. I always recommend that people place embellishments over the top of their titles, but I thought it was interesting that she placed a button beneath that to sort of fill the O area. And she's actually changed the orientation of that from a circle to an oval so that it fits within that O. So that was a nice little touch there. And then she added her elements. So you can see these elements here. We have a piece of stitching running across the horizontal line of the two frames and that creates tension against the circular or curved nature of the art stroke. And then she's mirrored that on the right hand side by creating a cluster with some urban threads and she's added in some greenery, which sort of pulls in these yellow greeny tones that we've got in a small amount of green in the photos on the other side of the page. Also like that she has resized the flower. This is quite a large flower and I've used it actually in a page at a much larger size, but it works too at a smaller size. So consider scale of different elements as you use them. And then you can see at the top of the template, I always include a title placement and a couple of text boxes. You can go ahead and remove those two. She decided not to use them. But in this case, if she wanted to add some journaling because she placed her elements differently on the page, then she would need to 
move this journaling box. And so you can do that by selecting the type tool and then just pulling in the edges of the bounding box to make that text box a different shape. And then you can use the move tool to move it into position. So if I were to add journaling, then I might add it in here. So I hope you've enjoyed this small tutorial. It's good to be back on the AA YouTube space. I hope to be back more frequently now that I'm back up and running again. If you've got any questions about the techniques demonstrated in this video, please email me at classes at AnnaAspinusDesigns.com. I'm always happy to help you grow and further your artistry. And feel free to post your pages inspired by this tutorial in the Anna Gallery at oscraps.com. I'll provide a link also to that below this video. And I will be back here again very soon. Take care and have fun creating.